but is one of the most important topics in the first quarter. Uh, we're going to start by talking about something called average rate of change, which you've spoken about in other classes with other names. Um, in pre-calc, you might have called it a difference quotient. Um, generally speaking, rate of change means slope, but we're going to be a little bit more specific here. So let's start by drawing ourselves a function. That is f of x. On this function, I'm going to point out two different x values. Just call them a and b. And then each one corresponds to a y value on f of x. We'll call that f of a and f of b. The what we call average rate of change, or the difference quotient, is measuring the same thing you learned about in Algebra 1, rise over run, slope. We want to talk about how much the y value has changed over the amount of time or the amount of distance on the x-axis. Well, if we want to measure how much the y value has changed, as you know, when you want to find the difference between the, the difference between two numbers, you subtract. So this distance right here would be called, we would label that as f of b minus f of a. That's the rise. And the x distance, that right over there, we would label that as b minus a, the change in the x values. What we're measuring here is not the slope of f of x, because f of x isn't straight. It doesn't have a slope. But what we are measuring is the slope of this, what we call a secant line, a line that goes through the function. We call that a secant line. And the formula for this average rate of change, or the difference quotient, or what we just said is the slope of the secant line, those are three synonyms that mean the same thing. And the formula to find them is we take the difference between the y values and divide it by the difference between the x values. Fantastic. That's not really the point of calculus, though. That's just the background. The actual point of calculus is the next piece right here, which is what we call the instantaneous rate of change. It's also known as the derivative at a point. So I want you to see the parallels here. Average rate of change, instantaneous rate of change, difference quotient, derivative at a point. Um, and then we're going to give a name for the, the line also. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, let's draw the same thing. We're going to have the same function. We'll label it f of x again. But this time, instead of having two points on the line and talking about the average rate of change connecting the two points, I want to talk about just one point. And instead of talking about the secant line connecting that point to another point, I want to, which would be the average rate of change, I want to look at what we call the instantaneous rate of change And visually, that would be the slope of the line that just barely touches f of x, which we call a tangent line. But I've got a problem. I can't measure slope of a line if I don't have two points on the line. Right? This whole formula down here, it was all based on using the two points from the two different x values, a and b. In our example, when we're looking for the instantaneous rate of change, I only have one point. I only have one x value. I only have one y value, which, by the way, we should label as f of c. So we're going to do something very, very, very clever. We are going to talk about or pretend that there was another point on here. So c is a constant. We're talking about the instantaneous rate of change at one specific value. 
that value is not going to change throughout our problem. But what I could do is put another point on that line at some x value, which is going to be variable. We're going to want to change it. You'll see why in just a second. And I certainly could find the slope of that secant line using the exact same formula I did a second ago, except now, instead of b and a, my two x values are c and x, and my two y values are f of c and f of x. So the difference quotient would be the difference between the two y values, f of x minus f of c, divided by the difference between the two x values, x minus c. And you might be looking at that and saying, well, that's the same thing we just had, and you're right. But what we're going to do is move that x value along so that it gets closer to the c. Because the orange line and the pink line that I've got over here, they're not the same thing. They don't have the same slope. But if I were to take an x value that were closer to c, let's say this one, and if I were to use that as my x, well, now that secant line is you know, the slope is pretty similar to the purple line. It's gotten even closer. Or if I were to make an x value that was even closer, you would start seeing that the orange and the purple line are almost the same thing. And so as we learned last unit, we can have this idea of taking the value that an expression or a function, in this case, this fraction, gets closer to as one piece of that function, the variable x, gets closer to some defined function, defined constant that we want it to be, which in this case would be c. Well, that's the whole point of a limit. So if I take the limit as x approaches c of the difference quotient, the slope of this orange secant line, eventually that would approach the slope of the purple tangent line, which is what we call the derivative at a point. And notice the symbol we have there for that is f prime of c. And this becomes an incredibly important formula. It is the formula for finding the derivative at a point, or the instantaneous rate of change at a specific x value in a function.